be conveyed very nicely. That is what the public service should be. So I'm also coming into this whole issue of lack of ethics. Don't wait until someone gives you an oath to say, well, I will abide by these rules and regulations. Nothing of the sort. Have your own ethics. You must have your own ethics because people look up to you. And why I say that is, uh, I'm sure some of you have already, uh, uh, when you learn management many, many years ago, some of you in your masters, maybe 15, 20, 30 years ago. I'm an ardent fan of uh, Henry Minsberg's 10 roles of a manager. What are these 10 roles? Sometimes you are a monitor. You monitor things. The whole development uh, uh, task has to be monitored. And that's why you have uh, units like uh, delivery unit in, in Britain, used to be, and then in so many in uh, Malaysia. You are a disseminator. You are a disseminator information. Take the Director General of Information. What does he do? He disseminates information of the government. How many of you as heads of departments and as secretaries to ministries will be asked about a very sensitive matter pertaining to the government? How do you say it? What words will you use being a disseminator? So many times you are also a spokesperson. So monitor, disseminator, spokesman all have to do with communication. Writing and talking. All, all three roles. Then, there's a bit of a leadership. Role three again. You are a figurehead. Sometimes you are a leader, certainly, and sometimes you are a liaison. You're in between. Between the government or between the minister and the public, you're the liaison. So how do you perform these roles? So altogether six. And last four, you're an entrepreneur, meaning you have to think of new things to do. That is why I said, you know, the day you go home, retire from the public service, can you sit down and think of, oh my God, I did this, 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 I started this, this, this. This is my program. You don't have to tell others, nor should there be an advertisement. For you it is important. You can only be happy if you have done all these things. You've done so many. I can't even think of the things that I have done. That is the thought that should come to you the day you go home. So, I'm telling you, my dear friends, you have more time. You have time to do these things. Of course, uh, maybe four or five years, but that is good enough. If you have not done anything, start doing those things. Being an entrepreneur. Disturbance handler, that's another role that you need to play. In crisis management, this is what you do. There's so many disturbances. Nothing is smooth. I come every day prepared to do 10 things minimum. And I end up doing 15 other things. Because that's the way the government is all about. But I have to keep time to handle these 15 things. Not succumb when you know, fade, faint and uh, maybe even develop a heart attack and die. That's not the way you are there. You need to be able to cope. I come to the last, uh, when, once I finish, I will talk about the physical importance also. Then you are a resource allocator. Certainly. You don't allow your chief accountant to just write down everything and say, okay, and sign it and send to the treasury. You will sit down with the chief accountant and say, okay, these are the priorities of my ministry, of my department. How, what, what things would you allocate your resources? And lastly, a negotiator. Negotiation skills. How many times in your career you have been a negotiator? Once as a visitation secretary in the Ministry of Education, Dr. Tara Dimel was the secretary and there was a huge mob which came into the ministry premises led by a well-known monk. Must have been at least 2,500 people. So everybody uh, advised, including myself, we advised Dr. Dimel, as she is a lady, you stay here, we will go and handle it. But when I said we will go and handle it, there was no one with me. Everybody backed out. So having said that, I couldn't back out. I went and uh, faced this. And the police told me, don't go, sir, they will manhandle you. I said, that's all right. Let, let me see. Gathered a lot of courage. But the first thing that I did was to, of course, it's a Buddhist monk, so I went and worshipped the monk. And then he said, ah, there's no problem. You are here, so we can talk about it uh, in a very friendly manner. And that's what I expected to do. So about 15 minutes, I talked to them. That is 
being able to negotiate finally the position of the government was saved their dignity was saved i was also saved i was back in my uh, job to do other things so negotiation is so important you gentlemen you sometimes go abroad to negotiate you sometimes negotiate agreements at, at your top level how do you do these things there are things that you want for the country there are others who will say no because we are giving you the grant this is how it must be done but in this process of negotiation you will come to a middle ground how do you do that communication again is so important the words you use that you don't speak with anger but you speak with authority two different things so how do you learn and that brings me to this word anger please learn to manage your anger <laughs> that's not going to help anyone certainly not going to help you if you start looking at some other medical evidence of people who have become angry throughout their life they have destroyed themselves stress is because you get angry if you don't get angry there is nothing to worry about if you can manage others will make you angry and walk away for the whole day you will be in that anger do you think it's going to help you certainly not so please start reading about these things anger management and that is why the harvard business school runs a weeks program if i remember on anger management my god now this has become so important 50 years ago they would have not even talked about it they would have talked management 101 basic things of management and that's it they would talk about leadership traits of leadership they will talk about transactional leadership transformational leadership all these things that's it there is no question of anger management but today they are talking about it because that is important people are getting angry unnecessarily why do you get angry either you are not in a position of command meaning you don't fully understand the situation so you pretend to be angry and try to overcome it. so that your other man or other person with you you think will succumb but if you are in overall command know the subject thoroughly you can communicate well your relationship building is extremely good you should there nothing to worry you just negotiate very technically but in a way that will not jeopardize your status jeopardize your career jeopardize your position jeopardize the organization that you are representing so so many things uh, that we can talk about and having said all that i i also want to uh, tell you uh, things that probably you could start doing now because say you are at the level of a secretary please remember this is a capacity building not just for fun this is a capacity building program where the government wants to prepare you to be leader of tomorrow take over ministries take over uh, very strategic functions of government and that is that is why i said i would love, i would love to see at least 200 300 people at the time you pick any of them they could to be a secretary to a ministry could to uh, handle what i am doing that's how we should be having in this country manage politicians manage the public manage the work that you do but with a sense of integrity so a uh, lot that you can learn out of these kinds of things but also it is important that you keep on learning if you stop learning my dear friends the world is growing the knowledge body is growing exponentially if you understand that word you know it it's not a straight line but it's exponentially over a period of time it's gathering lot of momentum so lot of knowledge is being uh, created stored beautifully compartmentalized you don't need to look at this whole gamut of things the only thing that you need to know is how do i find various pockets of knowledge which helps me that is what is important if you want to acquire the entire body knowledge that is not possible the knowledge is growing uh, at a much faster rate that you can uh, then you can acquire but it is important that you start uh, sitting down and uh, uh, finding out what you should learn okay i just want to sum up having said all this i believe uh, i also need to tell you something very practical down to earth on ground on a day to day basis We're talking about leadership at that level conceptualizing i remember uh, talking some time back uh, on a very important topic 
managing in turbulent times. This is exactly what it is all about. Times will get worse and your ability to manage becomes more difficult. They compared it to someone who is steering a ship. Actually, it's not a ship, it's a boat with sails, the traditional kind of ship in very turbulent waters. What does a skipper of a boat like that do? How does he manage without falling off or drowning? The final act is drowning. No, no, no more. You don't need to drown. But how do you manage this boat without succumbing or drowning in the ocean, which is turbulent, which is your work environment? It is always turbulent. More people look at you, focus on you. There are more media men looking at you. One word, you say the wrong word. For the rest of your life, it might be a problem. So one act of yours might be a problem. So you need to be thinking. So I just thought I will finally uh, sum up and thank you for this opportunity. Organize yourself. You are talking about day-to-day -day basis. You have to be a great organizer. Organize yourself first rather than organizing others. Your work, your personal life, everything needs to have a balance. When you say sharpen the saw, it meant you need to have a super physical structure.